Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my studio, to my studio, and welcome to this video. If you are new, please, if you enjoy the video, hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and um, be a, become a subscriber. So, I have decided that sometimes I get a little bit scattered. And I'm going to focus this week on my resin bowls. And you may have seen Louise Singleton do one. My friend Louise, we did a collaboration. Gosh, I'm trying to think when. It was a while ago, maybe even two years ago. And um, she's done... A video on these but the first person I saw must have been about four years ago I cannot remember her name but she does them and fills them with plaster of Paris and they are absolutely stunning and she fills the inside of them with resin like brightly colored resin and she leaves the, the tops are really narrow and she lets the resin drips come out so they're beautiful white plaster pots and they're big and she'll have like bright orange resin drips coming out anyway so um here's one i have here and this is made out of resin using a balloon here's another one i've got this is i'm in the middle of making here and it's almost finished I just need to tidy up the top. This is bigger. And so I'm going to make one with you. Louise, if you see her video, she's just, I don't know. She never makes mistakes. And I don't know if she leaves out the bloopers, but I'm not going to be able to tie the balloon as neatly as Louise. In fact, I've got pink resin on my studio wall over there because I was trying to I'd blown up the balloon and I use clear balloons which you'll see and I was I poured pink resin in because I like to see you know where all the resin is as I'm blowing it up and all will make sense and I was trying to tie a knot in the balloon and the balloon slipped out of my fingers and do not do this because a resin, a, a balloon, blown up balloon filled with resin that you let go that flies around your studio is not funny. It's not funny. And I did wipe up everything except for that mark on the wall and I can't get it off. I've tried everything and if I do, it, the plaster comes off. So don't do that. Anyway, this is gorgeous. I love this. This is so sweet. And um, actually this is on my Etsy store. There's some really nice photos of it if you want to take another look. And this one will be when it's finished. But this week, I'm going to do one with you and I'm going to make, I don't know, I'm going, this is balloon resin bowl week for me. And let's go on with it. Let's, let's make it together. Let's do this. Okay. Yes. Let's go for it. Okay. Poor lighting for this part, but it doesn't matter. So what I do is I dry out water bottles. This has been drying out. I just like tip tip them upside down and let them dry out over a few days. And in here I have mixed resin with a dark dye. And this is dyed navy blue. And I knew, I use nude balloons. And so I'm going to, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to blow the balloon up off camera because you don't want to hear me huffing and puffing. So I will be back. Okay. Oh, gosh, don't 
don't want to knock over my resin. So then I twist the balloon. This is a bit I hate in this whole, whole process. And if I stop talking to you, it's because I need to focus. I'm going to raise the camera up because, oh, let me get you in the whole picture. And then, I hate this bit. I hate this bit so much. Then, I open the end of the balloon. Did it, did it, did it. And put it over the water bottle. And then open that. Gosh, I hope, really hope you can see this. And I unwind it. Okay. Bring you back down. So now it's unwound. I'm going to hold this tightly. And I'm going to pour the resin into the balloon. So I use, this is eight ounces of resin. And the reason I use eight ounces will be evident once this is dried. I'm going to give you an example of one that I didn't, I only used like five ounces and I'm going to show you why I use more resin than five ounces. I'd rather use more and have a successful resin bowl than not. Oh, actually, you know, now. it all in. I think it's all in now. And you must wear gloves for this bit. And this is the part where I let the balloon go and it shot off. So twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. Hold that. God, I am hopeless at doing this. See how messy that is? I'm going to get a wet wipe. Just clean that. I'm going to clean the end of this balloon. I don't know why I can't do this. I've never been able to do this for kids' parties or anything, but you have to tie this in a knot. I think it's because I have really big hands. Anyway, you have to tie this in a knot. God, don't let go. Don't let go, don't let go. Especially not on camera. doing this. I think it's because I have really big hands. Maybe the balloons just don't undo, don't undo. I'm gonna do this. I've done so many of these and every time they give me an issue. I'll take my glove off, do it with my bare fingers.
take the other glove off. So now, I'm going to sit and watch some Netflix and swirl this around. It's got a bit of resin on the outside. Let me wipe that off with a baby wipe. And once that is fully coated, I will let it sit in something and let it set over a few days and then I will come back to you. So the balloon has been sitting for several days and it's nice and hard and I'm resting it on just a piece of tape for now. I'm going to move that aside. I want to show you another one that I did and if you don't fill it with enough resin this is what happens. It's just all, it's just doesn't get solid. And, you know, if it, it just doesn't work. Um, so just, I'm going to throw that away now. Right, right. Um, right, so the first step I do with my balloon, I always leave my last kind of you know when I've been flipping it and flipping it I leave the tie um, at the bottom to let all the resin go because obviously you don't want to use that bit so now I take a bowl and my other bowls have had quite a wide top I'm going to have this one um, slightly I'm going to just take it off camera a bit so rather than you see the top of my big head and place it right over the center and bring it back then I'm going to take a sharpie and draw around the bowl I thought I'd do a slightly narrower opening So glad summer is on the way. Okay, so that's that done. Not too worried about if it's slightly off center because I don't kind of flatten the base until I've done the resin and I do slightly different way than Louise does. She does just all resin. I do several layers of acrylic paint first and then I focus on resin. I feel like the acrylic paint gives it a really nice solid base and gets you started on the colour and you use less resin. Right, so now I have my Dremel and on it I have a diamond cutter and I'm just going to go around. I'm going to dim, dim the um, noise and maybe put some music on and speed this up, but I'm gonna go all the way around where I just drew the line. Okay, so there you have it. It's a slightly narrow hole, but actually not that much. Um, the other thing I do, I, I don't do is I don't peel the balloon off. There's no point because it's a real pain in the bottom and it's going to get covered with paint and resin anyway so there's no point. So I'm going to spray that with some alcohol and it takes about you know taking that balloon off it it takes ages and um, I don't like taking ages over anything. 
Right, that's all clean. I haven't mixed my paint up yet because I don't want to get all that nasty dust in there. So just cleaning that off. Clean the inside. And the inside's all resin anyway, so that's going to be lovely and shiny. And this one, you know I'm a beachy girl. Um, I'm going to do, I did a, I've done two, how many I've done? I've done one, two, three, I've done four so far. One has been beach themed and it came out, it's my favourite. So I'm going to do this as a beach themed one. So the colour's going to be all kind of oceany and lovely. All right, so the dust is off the outside. I can get rid of my tape. I have a vase here that I've completely covered in, um, you know, cling film paper. And it will stay in here until the bowl is finished, pretty much. Um, and I like the height of this. So there we go. There is my balloon. Resin balloon over it. I'm going to come back to you in a minute once I've got some paints mixed. So I'll do one layer of paint today. I'll do another layer of paint tomorrow with you. Maybe some slightly different blues, ocean colours. And then I'll do resin and, and, and then I'll just stick to resin. And the resin will probably be mm, maybe three coats of resin. And then... I don't know, decorate the top with sand or shells or shells and sand or something else. Think about it as I go along. So let me come back once my paint has dried. All right. Got my paint mixed. And so I'm using, well, it's just blues. I don't even know if I'm going to bother listing these below because they're going to be covered with resin anyway. So I've got like a dark blue, a slightly lighter blue, a dark aquamarine and like a sky blue. And I think what I'm going to do is start by doing a, I hope that's in your view. I think so. Yes. I'm going to start by doing a dirty pour in a cup and begin by pouring that. And what I found is when I've done that, you'll have some kind of missing pieces and you have to kind of dab those missing areas because then the rest of the paint will find it. So I'm going to begin with, this is actually ultramarine, ultramarine. And I'm going to move this out of the way. There. And this turquoise. I made a lot of that. And this is kind of medium thickness, not runny like a Dutch pour. It is the thickness you would have if you were covering a vase. You know, like it pulls and then sinks. I'm just gonna layer. I'm gonna try and fill this up. I'm not gonna use much of the very dark blue. I'm going to try to use that at the end. Oh, right. Let's try this. So it's a bit like a vase pour, really. I begin in the middle. So because the paint is thicker, it's going to be slower, which is what we want. We want thick paint. 
because it's going to make it tougher. I get my hand out of the way. Where's my where is my scraper? I need a extra scraper. Here's one. I don't want to waste a blob. Yeah, see I had the dark blue at the bottom and on the top. Now I'm just going to go around and encourage, I'm just going to kind of help it come down in all the areas where it seems to have arched. Because then when I pour the remaining paint, it'll hit those areas. Okie dokie. I've mixed my resin. I'm just going to zap the bubbles off the top. Um, and I'm using... Oh, let's go from this side. This is Artist Loft Light Blue. This is Naked Fusions Blue Sky. This is Mermaid Trash Sea Turtle. And this is Mermaid Trash Tidal Wave Pigment Powders and Paint. So the, um, the paint coating, I did two coats of paint. So, you know, it's nice and solid and dry. And I'll probably do three coats of resin. So I'm going to begin with the light blue and I'm just going to do not a dirty pour, I'm going to do a layered pour so they can drip down over each other and they're going to completely cover, they're not going to look anything like the paint layer because it's going to completely cover it but it gives me kind of a guide And the final coat will be a clear coat. And the other way I can do this, and they're not going on in any particular order. I love this colour. Is, I'm just going to go around with my finger to help this the resin sorry i changed the subject completely there didn't i changed the subject um with the resin because resin follows resin to help it drip evenly down the other way to do this is you can mix resin in two batches so that you let some set up so it gets a little heavier in the velocity and that way when you pour you know a later layer on because this has just been mixed so it's really kind of thin and runny um the later layer of the thicker resin will be more streaky if that makes sense because it won't drip as fast so you'll get some nice kind of striations and then if that what you do then would be to lightly sand it with some like wet and dry wet or dry sandpaper, you know, a very fine sandpaper, and then pour your final clear coat of resin over the top. Here it is with its um, final clear coat, and it's gorgeous. Now what I have to do is separate the bowl from the vase because it's completely completely solidly joined together. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife 
and my torch and I heat the blade up till it glows red. nice and red and then I will just go around the bowl and it's cutting in just like butter so I'm gonna go ahead and do that you don't have to watch me do that I'm just explaining how I get the bowl off and then sorry wobble do then I'll be back I've separated the bowl from its vase and you can see it's all lovely and shiny inside. And I took some super strong scissors and just kind of trimmed the top. And that won't matter in a minute because I'm going to be doing like a nice sandy top. So you won't see any kind of unevens. Now we have to get a flat bottom and it doesn't need to have a really big flat bottom, just a small one to, de to get that. We use a um, spirit level to determine where the middle is. So that's good there. So it's around about there. I'm going to put a sharpie dot. Let me just check that again. Nope. Well, it's pretty, pretty much there. And now I take my torch just to heat this up a bit. You can actually push it with your thumb. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to heat it up a bit more. I just want a dimple. There, see that's really flexible. And I'm going to hold that until that has set and then we'll come and do the embellishments. Okay, it's got this little dimple. It now stands nicely. I took off the little blue dot with some isopropyl alcohol. I have some sand that I collected in the Caribbean. It's lovely and bright yellow. And any bits and pieces that get stuck on there, I'll just take them off if I don't want them, but sometimes it looks just lovely and beachy. So I'm gonna use Mod Podge and I am just going to go around the edge like a, a good inch and put Mod Podge all, all over here, like so. Don't drip. Drips. This, this came out so pretty and like I said like you know I've you'll see other people maybe do these on on YouTube but I haven't seen many people do them don't bother taking the balloon out <laughs> it's just not worth it because it's buried in in between paint and resin it's just an extra step step you do not need to do right Nearly there. Here we go. Join up the ends. And I'm going to do a second coat of this sand once this first layer is dry. All right, let's see if that kind of looks even. I'm not worried if it's a little bit wavy. It is beachy. Okay, so I'll take my sand, put 
that around the edges. Stand that in here, give it a good shake around. In fact, what it might be easier to do is just sprinkle the sand on. Here's the finished result. It's absolutely so pretty. I put some flowers in so you can see. And here's the finished result. I'll bring in for a close up. Absolutely gorgeous. So thank you for watching. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.